Hi everybody, today we are going to do lab number five, which is predicted aerobic capacity. Hopefully you've already had a chance to watch the videos. Uh, if not, you can go to YouTube and find those videos and watch those. So, first slide, maximal oxygen uptake, or VO2 max. Definition is the maximum amount of O2 consumed per minute during large muscle mass exercise. It is the best indicator of aerobic capacity. The greater the aerobic capacity, the greater aerobic capacity of working muscle. Genetics is the primary determinant of aerobic capacity, around 70%. Training increased VO2 max by as much as 30%. And obviously, that's for the general human population. You're going to find variance from individual to individual. Some people can improve their VO2 max you know, up to 40%, maybe more. But in general, humans can improve their VO2 max by about 30%, and about 70% is genetic. Units, next slide, can be expressed in absolute and relative terms. Absolute is in liters per minute. Relative is in milliliters per kilogram per minute. Just like relative power, relative VO2 allows for uh, comparisons among people with different body masses. And then we have an equation there for relative uh, VO2. It is absolute times 1,000, which gets us from liters into mils, divide by the mass of the person in kilograms, and you get mils per kg per minute. Next slide is uh, direct measurement. So direct measurement of VO2 is a max test. We cover that in the next uh, lab. Gas analysis, direct measure of the amount of O2 utilized. It is not useful in large groups. It requires elaborate equipment. Our equipment in our lab is about $25,000 worth of equipment to do that for a direct max test measurement. Very expensive and time consuming. Not appropriate for all populations of people. Indirect measurement which we'll do in this lab is submax test. You'll actually watch Sam do two different submax tests. They use util or they utilize regression equations which estimate VO2 max through calculations incorporating heart rate, cardiac output, and work rate. Submax tests are suitable for large groups, may be more appropriate for children and the elderly who cannot complete a direct max test. Next slide, continuing indirect measurement. Equations are derived from past groups who completed both max and submax tests. Because heart rate is used, valid heart rate measurement is critical. When taking heart rate, always begin counting with zero rather than one. And again, obviously don't use your thumb, your thumb, use your index and middle fingers. VO2 max in training. In young sedentary subjects, approximately 50% of the increase in VO2 max due to training is related to an increase in maximal stroke volume, or SV which is uh, max heart rate remains relatively the same. And 50% is due to an increase in the arterial venous oxygen difference, or a VO2 difference. Large differences in VO2 max in general population, uh, two all the way up to six liters per minute, are due to differences in maximal stroke volume, or SV. Next slide, transition from rest to exercise. Energy requirements increase, obviously. Metabolism increases in increased proportion to work rate. Oxygen consumption increases to produce adequate ATP, which is our energy source, and cardiac output increases via increases in heart rate and stroke volume. Oxygen extraction at muscle cells increases, therefore venous oxygen content decreases. VO2 remains constant when maximal VO2 is reached, even though work intensity continues to increase. So when you truly reach a maximal VO2, even if you increase work rate, which is speed or um, percentage grade that the person is running at, their VO2 is going to stay the same because it can't get any higher. VO2 increases in a linear fashion when plotted against Q, which is cardiac output, heart rate, and workload. So next slide is heart rate versus work. There's a direct linear relationship between heart rate and work. Next slide after that, stroke volume versus work. Stroke volume is the volume of blood ejected per beat. Stroke volume increases with increases in work rate until reaching 50% of work rate max or VO2 max then stroke volume plateaus. Next slide is Q versus work or cardiac output versus work. Q equals heart rate times stroke volume. Q increases in a direct linear fashion with increases in work. Less than 50% work max, Q increases due to increases in heart rate and stroke volume. Greater than 50% work max, increase in Q comes from heart rate only. And that's from those previous two slides we just looked at. Next slide is AVO2 versus work. AVO2 difference increases as a hyperbolic function of work. Okay, so that difference in arterial and venous O2 is going to increase, obviously, as muscle needs more oxygen. Next slide, 
uh, VO2 versus work. VO2 equals, so the equation we're going to give you there is the Fick equation, Q times AVO2 difference. So VO2 equals Q times AVO2 difference. And again, you'll see that VO2 is a positive direct linear relationship with work until you hit max and then it levels off. Equations in the final um, slide there, Fick equation, again, VO2 equals Q times AVO2 difference. Q is cardiac output equals heart rate times stroke volume. And heart rate max is estimated by taking 220 minus age.